To improve your knowledge of the markets, focus on three things. Opening bell, closing bell and the bell icon. Welcome back friends in this English episode of Weekly Market Outlook. Firstly, I would like to update all of you on the latest coronavirus. Across 215 countries, we are witnessing 47.55 lakh plus cases and 3 lakh plus deaths. US alone has more than 15 lakh cases and in excess of 90,000 deaths. The pace of registering new cases has come off, but still it remains a serious cause of concern. As per Asian Development Bank that is ADB, The coronavirus pandemic has cost the world almost 8.8 trillion dollars which is roughly 10% of the world GDP. Amongst the top 5 countries include USA, Spain, Russia, UK and Brazil. India is currently ranked at 11th place but the pace at which new cases are cropping up is very worrisome. In India we are currently having 92000 plus cases which is almost 44% greater than what was last week. deaths are also in excess of 2900 plus so far we are going into the fourth phase of lockdown from 18th may so it seems that there is no short term solution to this problem till the time we don't get a cure we will have to learn to live with this one one worrisome news is that a second wave of virus attack is being seen in china south korea and france where new cases have cropped up post the lockdown relaxation us markets witnessed a sell off last week with Dow Jones and S&P 500 losing 2% plus on the back of simmering tensions between the US and China. Nasdaq lost close to 1% last week. US president blocked semiconductor shipment to China's Huawei Technologies and likewise China is set to put US companies such as Cisco Systems, Qualcomm and Apple in an unreliable entity list under which restrictions and investigations could be launched against them. Furthermore, The US president suggested that the US could cut ties with China. Also, the US Federal Reserve chairman Jerome Powell warned that a recession worse than any since World War II could come and also put pressure on the markets. And fears of a second wave of coronavirus infections across many countries also called jitters in the market the world over. The CBOE VIX, that is the fear index, also called the volatility index, rose by around 14%. indicating an increase in investor fears and nervousness on other news and data front the us michigan consumer sentiment for may came in at 73.7 better than expectations but still its second lowest reading since december 2011 furthermore industrial production in us fell 11.2% in april its largest drop in 101 year history of the index weekly initial jobless claims was at 2.98 million above the forecast of 2.5 million further adding concerns and taking the total unemployed to almost 25% of the working age population that is around 36 million overall over the past two months next the us reported a record budget deficit in april at 738 billion dollars on the back of an explosion in government spending and a shrinking in revenue amid the novel coronavirus pandemic and lastly the us department of justice and a group of state attorneys may file antitrust lawsuits against Google focusing on how Google leverages its dominant search business to stifle competition on a positive note however factory workers in Michigan US are to resume work in General Motors Ford and Chrysler from 18th May onwards European markets also witnessed a selling pressure and profit booking last week with the euro stocks and index of the top 50 european stocks and dax the german index and the cac 40 the french index all losing anywhere between 4% and 6% while britain's futsi 100 lost around 2% last week on the economic data released last week for the eurozone fitch ratings the world's leading rating agency downgraded france's sovereign credit rating outlook to negative from stable at double a further The eurozone quarterly economic contraction was confirmed at 3.8% for the first quarter, the steepest since 1995, with Germany and France, the two largest economies of Europe, 
officially entering into recession. Germany's GDP shrank by 2.3% in the first quarter of 2020, while the UK economy shrank by 2% in the first quarter. Further, industrial production in Britain fell 4.2% in March, which was the biggest decline since 1972. In a corona-related news, a study from Pasteur Institute published in the journal Science showed a 4.4% of the French population had contracted the COVID-19 disease, indicating that a collective immunity will not be sufficient to avoid a second wave at the end of the confinement. This also seemed to have spooked the markets. Asian markets too witnessed selling pressure last week, with most indices, the Shanghai, the Nikkei and the Nifty losing less than 1%. Bank Nifty and index tracking the Indian banking sector saw the maximum decline at 2.68% last week. India wakes the fear factor, the volatility index traded sideways around 38 levels, which still is at higher levels as investor fear and nervousness still remains high. On the economic data front, China processed a total of 53.85 million tons of crude oil, which is equivalent to about 13.1 million barrels per day in April, higher than 11.78 million barrels per day in March, which was a positive sign from the world's second largest economy. Further. Factory activity in China rebounded 3.9% during April, the first month of growth this year and above market expectations of 1.5%. Vehicle sales in China rose 4.4% year-on-year to 2.07 million in April 2020, the first increase since June 2018. On data front from Japan, the index for leading economic indicators, which is a gauge of the economy a few months ahead and is compiled using data such as job offers and consumer sentiment, fell to 83.8 in March 2020. This marked the lowest reading since June 2009, signaling that economic conditions in the world's third largest economy are worsening due to the health crisis. On a positive note, however, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said the government has decided to lift the state of emergency for about 80% of the provinces. As far as India is concerned, last week, Prime Minister Modi announced a special economic package of Rs 20 lakh crores, equivalent to 10% of the GDP, with focus on MSME, that is micro, small and medium-sized companies, agriculture, migrant labor, defense, make in India, amongst a host of announcements. Markets are still digesting and analyzing the announcements, but going by the first cut, markets do not seem to be very enthused or excited. We will see how the markets behave next week. On data front, India's industrial production plunged 16.7% year-on-year in March 2020, the steepest decline since records began in 1994 and much worse than market expectations of an 8.7% decline. In another development, the United Nations cut India's projected growth rate to 1.2% in 2020 and forecast that the global economy will shrink by 3.2%, the most since the Great Depression, as the pandemic paralyzes the world. On the commodities front, both gold and silver gained, with gold gaining plus 2%, whereas silver was the major gainer, up 8.19% week on week. As investors sought for safety amid renewed US-China trade tensions and concerns over long-drawn economic weakness. On the crude oil front, prices jumped almost 13%, closing near to the 30 mark for the NYMEX WTI, amid a rise in Chinese demand as the economy emerges from lockdown and after Saudi Arabia announced last week that it will cut production by an extra 1 million barrel per day starting in June. Also, the International Energy Agency forecasted that the oil supply would plunge to a nine-year low in May following production cuts in some of the world's top producers. OPEC expects global oil demand to shrink by 9.07 million barrels per day, compared with a previous estimate of 6.85 million barrels per day. US weekly stockpiles unexpectedly dropped by 0.745 million barrels compared to a forecast of 4.147 million barrels rise. That was the first decline in crude oil stocks since mid-January. These factors supported crude oil prices. On the currency front, the rupee traded in a range of 75-76, with crucial support seen around 74.70 and resistance around 76.40. To talk about FII's, last week they sold 5,951 crores, 
whereas GIS bought worth 1074 crores. In sectoral performance, Nifty Auto was the major gainer at 5.48%, whereas Bank Nifty was the major loser at 2.68%. In terms of open interest data, maximum open interest is seen at 10,000 call option and 9,000 put option in the May series. This week's major economic events are 18th May Japan's Q1 GDP growth rate, 19th May Germany's U economic sentiment index for May, again 19th May US housing starts for April, 20th May US FOMC meeting minutes which is the Federal Open Market Committee, the monetary policy making body of the US Central Bank, 21st May US initial jobless claims data and 22nd May Japan's inflation rate for April. No major data releases expected from India this week. In terms of company results, key results are Bajaj Finance on 19th May, LNT Infotech on 19th May, Bajaj Auto on 20th May, Ultratech Cement on 20th May, and Bajaj FinServe on 21st May. Apart from this, the 53,125 crore rights issue of Reliance Industries hits the market on 20th May, which is the largest rights issue ever in India. It is open till the 3rd of June and is being offered at 1257 per share. How the market reacts to this is to be seen. US-China trade tension, reaction of markets to government's stimulus package, effect of lockdown 4 and global queues. All these will impact the markets this week. Speaking about Nifty and Bank Nifty, market is likely to witness choppy trading sessions with long-term trend remaining down. Nifty has support at 8,900 and below that 8,650 and resistance at 9,350 and then at 9,530. Whereas Bank Nifty has support at 17,700 and then at 17,200, whereas resistance is seen at 19,400 and 20,200. To learn more, subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and also you can click on the bell icon for notifications so that whenever I release any video, you get to know immediately. Stay safe and trade well and wish you all the best. Thank you. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.